<laughs> Hello, I'm Real T. I'm your genuinely loving and concerned friend, hoping you have a nice day. Today we're doing a quick video on Invincible, the comic, the show that just came out. It's blowing up on Amazon. The things Amazon is doing with the boys in Invincible is incredible, super high quality show with depth of writing, good character buildup, everything just works and you watch it and you're just blown away from the quality. And it's been so long since I've seen a cartoon show bring this level of quality and character depth in everything that it's doing. Um, man, really like Avatar The Last Airbender, that's like one of the old, like seer a show that takes itself seriously anyway, not like Rick and Morty or like a, you know, a family guy type, South Park type show. I'm talking about more of like a adult cartoon for, that has a really solid story that isn't just solely based on comedy. I haven't seen one of those since like Avatar The Last Airbender on Nickelodeon. There's really aren't that many of these out. So the fact that it is out, I just want to give it some attention. If you guys haven't heard about it, you guys haven't watched it, you guys need to. And so Invincible as told by Wikipedia, that's what we're going through today. Why am I making this video? Well, some of you guys don't want to read it, so I'll just make a video about the front page. Let's do this. <laughs> Invincible is an American comic book series written by Robert Kirkman, illustrated by Corey Walker and Ryan Otterly. Robert Kirkman, by the way, is the dude behind The Walking Dead. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's had like eight seasons in its TV show. It's had a spinoff, but no, not any of that. He made the comic book. Which is even better, okay? Because I read the comic book back in the day. A lot of hype. Uh, there's always really good character buildup in all of his stories that he wrote. Recently wrote Ultimate X-Men as well for Marvel. So like, this guy is a professional. If you ever meet him, get an autograph. Not for me. An autograph for yourself, my dude. Set in the Image universe, Invincible follows the coming of age of superhero Mark Grayson. Invincible a Voltramite and firstborn son of Omni-Man, the most powerful person on the planet. The series began publication on January 2020, 2003, concluding on February 14, 2018, with 144 issues. A television series adaptation began streaming on Amazon Prime Video on March 25, 2021 to critical acclaim. It has 144 issues. This is one of the comics that are done. And so you can read it and know that there's an ending and know that everything is really planned out and meticulously like chosen how they want to tell the story with each issue. So I haven't finished reading it. I'm on about, you know, issue 25 and I'm having a really good time. I read it like every night when I go to bed. <laughs> but I did finish the show, which is why I'm making this video because the show is what introduced me to Invincible the comic. So yeah, watch it, it's incredible. Anyway, plot synopsis. Mark Grayson is a teenage superhero, Invincible. He was a normal high school senior with a normal part-time job and otherwise normal life. Except his father, Nolan, is the superhero Omni-Man. The most powerful superhero on the planet. At the age of 17, Mark began to display superpowers, which come from his father being a member of the Voltramite race, who, according to Nolan, pioneered the galaxy on a mission of benevolence and enlightenment. As invincible, Mark begins work as a superhero with his father acting as his mentor and meeting other heroes including Robot, Rexplode, Duplicate, and Adam Eve, discovering that his physics teacher has been turning his students into human bombs to foiling plans by the Molar Twins to make an army of robots. Meanwhile, Omni-Man is kidnapped by aliens, taken to another dimension, but returns after what seems to be only a few days. That was actually eight months to him. Just so you know, this is all stuff that's happened like nearly at the beginning of the show, the first couple episodes. And 
the first couple chapters or issues in the comic so it isn't necessarily spoiler but just so you know there could be spoilers in this video if you haven't watched the series yet so really get into it uh before you watch this video or if you want to hear the spoilers go for it you know don't get mad at me <laughs> I like the description of what happened. I will say from reading the comic book and watching the show, the timeline is kind of different the way everything happens. For example, Omni-Man, is this a spoiler? Morning spoiler. <laughs> Again, um, Omni-Man at the beginning of the TV show kills the last like hero league, like in the first episode immediately. Meanwhile, in the comic, it takes a couple of chapters of build up to that happening and it kind of changes your first reaction to the whole show or whole series in general because when you're reading the comic you feel like oh this is just another fun lighthearted story and then bam they hit you with what happens you're like whoa okay i gotta read the next chapter and figure out what happens next what happens next each chapter each issue you're like oh what happened next the hype <laughs> while the show just does it immediately and it doesn't take away though like the whole time you're wondering what happens next? <laughs> it's funny, but um, I think, you know, the choice to do that for the series was a good one for the TV show because I could see a lot of people being thrown off at the beginning just thinking it's another animated cartoon show for kids, but it totally takes the opposite choice and I love it for it. <laughs> it's a show for young adults, I'd say. Publication history. While Robert Kirkman has been the sole writer of the series, Cory Walker and Ryan Otterley have contributed the art. Cory Walker Cole created the book and provided art from issues 1 to 7 as well as 127 to 132. Ryan Otterley assumed art duties with issues 8 and drew all other issues. Kirkman has provided backup space for a few aspiring comic creators, most notably Benito Cyrano and Nate Bellagarde. The book is notorious for being graphically violent, despite the colorful nature and visuals. And graphic it is true. It is very graphic, very violent, very like just visually extreme. You will see all the guts and the gore and the blood. So if you are wanting to get in the series or if you've already seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's not crazy enough to make you like want to vomit, but it's just so extreme. Like, I don't think I've seen a cartoon show ever do this in such a realistic way. I think that's it. It didn't make me vomit anyway. In fact, when I first saw it, I was just kind of like that Pikachu face. I'm like, that's how I felt. Anyway, in August 2016, Robert Kirkman announced the series would end late in 2017 with issue 144, with Ryan Otterley coming back to the book for the final 12 issues sequence. The double size final issue was released on 14th, February 2018. You know, I'm, I'm really used to reading manga and anime and all, watching all that stuff and the one thing i don't like about those things specifically is that they're never finished not that they're never finished like most of them do complete and get done but like a lot of the times you're going to be waiting for the next chapter to release either once a month once a week or once a year and you're going to have to wait like 10 years for this story to finish up and so i appreciate when a comic book like this can really have its entire story in like 150 issues that's like 150 chapters that's really fast and for it to just do so many extreme things it's got to have a lot of quality bunched up in there not to say that anime and manga don't by the way i love that stuff i read it i read manguas too man oh my gosh don't even get me started with the manguas they are even worse when it comes to not being finished and done there are a couple ones that are done but yeah um they kind of like the fast food of a manga don't take that personally <laughs> but it's just instead of reading like a page where it has like six panels you're reading just one panel and you're just like one panel you scroll up one panel scroll up one panel it's a web little webtoon type thing and yeah you know that's how i spend my days reading lots of cool stories
characters. By the way, I'm going to make this a little bit more spicy and fun because I read and I watched it. So Mark Grayson, a 17 year old high school student who becomes superhero invincible. What are the difference between the comic and the show? Well, you just really see in more detail how Mark Grayson lives his life in the show. And I, in the comic book, it kind of speeds run to the whole first six episodes. Like you, you, everything happens so fast that um, all I remember in the comic is that he just worked a part time job. Really nothing about school. But you really see his high school life a lot more in depth in the first season of the show versus the comic book issues. There's a lot more things that happen and it's more fleshed out visually. Um, I, it, the comic book feels really fast, the issues, whenever you're reading it too. And so, kind of makes sense. Omni-Man, Mark's father, Nolan, Debbie's husband, and formerly the greatest superhero of Earth. Okay, there's a lot of differences in this. Because you spend a lot more time with Omni-Man in the show, it feels like. And you really get to know him and see him do lots of different things. Like, for example, him spending eight months on an alien planet, destroying them all. But what, what seems like a few days to Earth timeline. And, like, it actually shows him there on that other planet decimating everybody. Because in the show, we already know he murders, like, the whole hero associates. So... In the comics, you don't know that till later. And you see him go out to that planet, the alien planet, but it doesn't show you what happens. And maybe I haven't gotten to the point where it does show that, but uh, I just didn't see it. I don't remember it. Um, what else? He, the whole dynamic, if you get to the last episode of the series, this, um, it's really good. I don't want to say anything because they'll spoil it, but like, it's, he really makes Mark just into a little ball and beats him up and just like tells him how it is and be like you are a Viltrumite this is the options in the comic it just goes by a lot faster and I think we really did miss a lot of those epic emotional beats that made me fall in love with the show uh, because I was introduced to that first it felt like a twist in the comics whenever you you find out he killed all the heroes and then he destroys Mark and then he flies off because that all happens like immediately one after another. But while in the show, since everything is spaced out, it feels like you're experiencing it. Like whenever he gets Mark's face and he rams it in front of people and just decimating thousands of lives and then like starts beating him up into a mountain and just like being <laughs> there's this one moment i've seen so many memes of it and he's just like he's just like think <laughs> think mark think and he's like it's like making that face oh my gosh <laughs> like it's so sad it's so epic so emotional you can see like why he feels so damaged as a person because this is like it is his flesh and blood it's his son and they still all the, a lot of the lines are still the same by the way not much is different it just the show does what a show should do which i guess a lot of shows don't actually do but they made that comic book and made it better and made you live it like you just all the audio the music the voice acting it just brings it color okay whereas in the comic book you're just reading it and i personally i have like a music in the background so that when i listen to it i can like get in, in a good mood so maybe i'll put like the batman ost or i'll put like avengers music on or something like that but yeah um dang <laughs> debbie grayson mark's mom nolan's wife adopted mother of oliver grayson so the difference here is that debbie in the show is a lot more present a lot more fleshed out as well as a character you really see her have a complex mind and detective thoughts about what's happening and, and having suspicion about omni-man and feeling different ways like you understand why she gets so demotivated whenever she finds out that he just thinks of her as a pet and <laughs> it's just terrible um you really feel for the character and you understand why she's so fucking sad meanwhile in the comic book it you really don't see her but like a handful of times and she doesn't really say much and then it just shows her being super sad after the whole omni-man fight uh with mark and uh, it's like yeah i can understand why there's like a lot of miscommunications on like 
the character and and like her value in the comic like i i do feel like the weight of her character is done so much better in the show uh, as a real mom you know you feel like oh yeah that's mark's mom it feels like she's like the humanity of omni man while in the comic book she's not there enough to really see that but she is the one who got omni man to really see the world in a different light versus being a viltrumite you know we're doing a wikipedia video so just so you know these next characters i don't even know about yet i haven't finished the comic i'm getting through it but i'm still reading it and then the show hasn't revealed it yet so big spoilers big spoilers lord argel the former king of ultramite prior to his death and the and the father of omni man the grandfather of invincible and oliver grayson do you see the pain in my uh spoiling myself fuck Oh my god, I shouldn't do this, maybe, ha, <laughs> whatever. Oliver Grayson, Mark's alien half-brother, the result of a relationship between Nolan and the member of an alien race who have short lifespans growing in rapid increased rates compared to human through his father's DNA, slowly aging over time. Although his mother was an insect-like humanoid, he resembles a Voltramite slash human with purple skin. His mother tells his brother to take him to Earth so that... He can have a life with the people there because of their lifespan is longer than her people and he gets adopted by Debbie. He takes the serpent kid of Omni Man and young Omni Man. He attempts to rehabilitate the Omni. Oh man. This is just so many spoilers. Oh my god. I haven't gotten this far. I'm like kind of mad. I am. I'm legitimately mad. I'm fucking reading this. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. You know what? I can't do this to myself anymore. Uh, superheroes. <laughs> We're just gonna read the ones we know. Okay. First season. Keep it at that. <laughs> Ooh. Damn. I feel. I feel all knots up inside, man. Ah, oh, dude. I spoiled myself. Uh, sorry for you guys who heard those. Oh my god. Adam Eve, Samantha Eve Wilkins, former classmate of Marx and member of the team, team team, team team, so, <laughs> Teen Titans! <laughs> uh, it's, I, it, so, just so you know, I think the series is very playful with how they name and do everything, because of course, superheroes like DC and Marvel already exist, so it does like really comedically and tastefully poke fun at little things or just like you can see how they're kind of parodying or spoofing these ideas of older heroes and and giving them a lemon twist making them fun <laughs> eve was created as a result of a government experiment to create super beings didn't know that what the fuck okay <laughs> can manipulate all matters through a mental block it has previously stopped her from creating and manipulating living things okay that makes sense um didn't know that didn't know that this is wikipedia man <laughs> stay away from wikipedia oh my gosh oh my gosh i don't know okay we're gonna skip around to things we know um let's uh okay let's skip the films everything else might be a spoiler so i just don't want to get into it because of just myself and like i don't want to ruin that for me film on april 4th 2017 it was announced that point gray pictures and sky bound entertainment are set to produce a live action movie with seth rogan and evan goldberg attached as writers and directors of universal pictures distributing the movie series creator robert kirkman is also to set and produced the film along with Rogan, Goldberg, David Alpert, Brian First, and Sean First. In January 2021, Kirkman reaffirmed that the film is still in development despite the release of streaming television adaptation and that Rogan and Goldberg are still involved with the project. Oh my gosh, this is epic! <laughs> I didn't know a movie was coming out for this. Dang, and it's with Seth Rogen in it? And all these other characters dude uh, just real quick just for me personally i'm an asian american okay and although we do have some representation in hollywood nowadays um it's all about kung fu and martial arts which is cool it's that's its own thing but if they make 
Mark Grayson, like Asian as well. And it's really, really good. Like why we love it isn't because of martial arts or isn't because we can sing or dance. It's just because he's a human becoming a superhero and he's dealing with family issues and drama that are very relatable to anybody. Like you don't have to know martial arts to like watch it and be like, oh, cool, Kung Fu. Um, that is a feat. And if this movie is really good, which I think it will be because of Robert Kirkman, Seth Rogen, all these people who are attached to the project, that's going to be a really big win as an Asian American, I feel like. Um, so, yeah, I just want to throw that out there because we've never had something like that. Really. It's always about being Asian. I, and I, I know that's weird to explain and this video shouldn't even be about this. But hey, man, it's my YouTube channel, so I'm just making videos. I'm kind of ranting. Um, it'd be really nice to see an Asian movie or a, a movie with an Asian person in the lead where he's not doing something specific that you're like, oh, yeah, he's Asian, so he can do that. You know what I mean? I'd like to see a project where it's like, oh, this guy, he's a really good actor. And like the story is just really fucking good. These characters are really fucking good. <laughs> Oh yeah, along with that, yo, Robert Kirkman, thank you so much for making Mark half Asian. Like, he didn't have to be. It was definitely a choice, and... You know, it's crazy, because whether he was a different race or not, I don't think it would have affected what would happen. And so, if, honestly, it was just a fun choice. I appreciate that. Also, one thing I want to touch on is Mark's first girlfriend, Amber, uh, since we're already talking about race anyway, it's changed for the show and the comics, and that's another difference. So, Amber is black in the TV show, and she's white in the comic. And once again, there's not a big difference between the two characters as far as, like, their relevancy. You know, they play the same role. And I would even say the show version really fleshes her out way more and gives you a reason to why she's like upset and mad, not accepting BS or like, oh yeah, you're a superhero, so what? You know, like you lied to me, you know, that's facts, you know? And uh, me, and I'm still earlier on in the comic book, but Amber is just kind of there. She pops up like once or twice. They got together, her and Mark got together really quick. It just happened out of nowhere. You didn't really see it coming. So in the show, they gave a reason for that happening, which is the whole bully dynamic. It's like that whole Peter Parker dynamic. Uh, they kind of made her into the, like a, a Mary Jane type, which is very cool and I'm all for it. And it made me like the show that much more than the comic uh, this time. Yeah, they just really, they have the opportunity to really bake in these details and really think about how they can tell the story better and really flesh it out. Yeah television series on june 19 2018 amazon studio announced they had greenlit an adult animated adaptation of a comic series set to consist of eight hour long episodes with creator robert kirkman to executive the produce the series on january 31 2019 a full cast list was revealed featuring steven yun sandra oh and jk simmings as Invincible, Debbie Grayson, and Omni-Man, respectively, with Rogan ending up being involved as a part of the cast. But he and Goldberg are not set to direct, write, produce the series. It premiered on March 26, 2021, and April 29, 2021. The series has been renewed for our second and third season. So let's end this on a positive note. There's gonna be a season one and two. I'm so stoked for it. By then, I'm gonna be caught up on the comic I'm really excited and then I'll make another video. This is a great series and I hope you had fun watching this with me. I just kind of wanted to break down what Wikipedia had to say and along the way kind of talk about the differences between the comic book and the show. So hope you enjoyed it. Sub, like, comment, all that jazz. It helps a lot, you know, getting me in the recommendation feed of other people who watch videos like this and, you know, trying to survive. Okay? <laughs> so uh, you guys have a great day. Your homie uh, is signing out. Real T signing out. Stop hate, make love. Anybody can be a hero. Peace.